Hello and welcome to Empowered Learning. This is the second video in the Set Theory Basics series. And in this video, we will talk about set operations. So we want to start off studying what those operations are, how they're similar to operations that we already know from the real numbers, and how we actually interpret them. And so what you'll see, what we'll do is we'll form um, sets by doing let's say set arithmetic and we want to show how that looks in the Venn diagram as well. All right so the first thing that we want to do is know what our basic operations are. And so we know that um, just like how we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, um, division, and our negative sign meaning our negation sign, we have things that are similar to that in set theory. So the first operation that we want to talk about is the union operation. And so just like how um, we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, they are binary operations, meaning that we need two things uh, to be able to actually do the operation. So like, for instance, if we have 2 plus 3, it's a binary operation because we need something to the left of it and something to the right of it in order to have it make sense. Okay. So here, um, our union operator is acting like addition within set theory. And so uh, the key word that we use to uh, describe that is the word or. And so, for instance, if we had like A union B, then that means that as long as um, you have an element in set A or in set B, you can add it in the new set A union B. Okay. Similar to that, we have the intersection, which is the upside down view. And so that's similar to multiplication. And so we'll see again that um, when we do this, this is like overlapping. And of course, we'll go over this again. So uh, we want to know what's in common with both of these sets. For the complement, which is basically what is outside of that set, um, we either use this symbol or this C, both um, in the place of where you would write an exponent to be able to do that. And of course the difference here, um, let's say if we had A minus B, then we would understand that to be everything that is in A but is not in B. Okay. And again, we'll go over all that and give you some visuals um, and some examples on that. Okay. All right, so moving on here. So let's say we take our example where we our universal set is just the natural numbers from 1 to 10. We know that E is going to be a set where uh, of all X where X is even. So to translate that, that's going to be all the even natural numbers from 1 to 10. A is the set where it just has 1, 2, 4, 7, and 8. And B is the set where it has 1, 3, 4, 5, 8. And so um, when we do A union B, then of course, this means everything, uh, as long as you have an element in the set A or in the set B, you'll put it in the new set, A union B. And so here, uh, to form this, we just look at both of these and we say, as long as we see that element in one of the two, we write it in the new set. So of course, for the first set, we see a one, we see a two. So we'll write one, two, we don't see three here, but we do see it in this one. So that'll be three. We see four in the first one, A. Uh, we, we don't see five here, but we do see five here. We don't have a six in A, and we don't have a six in B. But we do have a seven in A. And we have an eight in both of them, so uh, we just write it once. So that is what the set A union B would look like. And so, of course, if you notice here, if we look at our Venn diagram, you'll see that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, and 8 all in there. So that's how it would look if we put it in the Venn diagram. All right, let's move on to our next example. So now we have the intersection of A and B, meaning um, what both sets have in common. And so here I've put uh, the new set that contains the elements 
uh, that sets A and B have in common or the overlap in between them. And so you can see here, if we're looking at it from a Venn diagram standpoint, we should just have the set with the elements 1, 4, and 8. And how we get that looking at it in this form is we just see what elements show up in both sets. So we see that 1 shows up. Um, we know 2 doesn't show up in both, but we know that 4 does. And if we look here, 7 doesn't show up in both sets, but 8 does. And so now we just list 1, 4, 8. Moving on to the next operation example, which is the complement. So we see here that uh, the complement is the new set that has all elements that are not in the set E with respect to the universal set. Okay. So remember, the universal set is everything that we're taking uh, into consideration for this discussion, which is all the natural numbers um, from 1 to 10. And so uh, here I know that the complement of E is not equal to this, but you notice how I have this last statement here that says take away all elements in the set E. Well, um, if you remember, or we can also see it right here, we have all the even numbers from um, the natural numbers from 1 to 10. We just need to get rid of those. So we get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And what we're left with is those odd numbers and that is what E complement actually ends up being. Okay. All right, moving on to our example for difference. We see that when we interpret A minus B or the difference in between A and B, it's the new set that contains elements that are in set A but not in set B. Okay. So here we take everything that is in A, but if we see an element that is in A, but also in B, we get rid of it. Okay. So if we look here, we see one is in A and we see that B has that too. So we get rid of that. Two is in A, but it's not in B. So we keep it. Four is in A, but we also see it in B. So we get rid of it. Seven is in A, but we don't see it in B. So we keep it. Eight is in A, and we also see it in B, so we get rid of it, okay? And really, I should have been doing this on this side here, so let me do it here. Yeah. Really should have did it like that, so I'll go ahead and get rid of these. And so now that we're done with this, what's left is the two and the seven, And yeah, let me, yeah, just two and seven. And so now our set here is just the set that has two and seven. Okay. So that's how that works. All right. So a couple of things that we want to observe here is that first, we know that when we talk about the complement of E or everything that is outside of E with respect to the universal set, Another way that we could actually interpret that is the difference between the universal set and the set E. And so if we looked at it that way, um, if you notice, everything that's in the universal set, but not in E, uh, would be the result here. And of course, since E is all of the even numbers, then of course, if we get rid of all the even numbers again, just like how we did last time, we see that we end up with all the odd ones. So anytime that you express the complement of a set, you can also express that equivalently as the difference in between the universal and that um, original set. We also see that for the difference in between A and B, we can also interpret that as the difference in between A and the intersection of A and B. And so um, here, this is how it would look if we were doing it, um, quote unquote, algebraically. So we have the set A, and of course we want the intersection in between A and B. Of course we found that out to be just the set one with one, four, and eight. And of course if we want to take the difference in between A and the intersection, everything that we see in the intersection has to be removed from here. And so of course we do that just like how shown here, and we just get the set with just two, seven.
And if we go back a bit, you'll notice that <clears throat> here we're talking about everything that is in A, but you see how we removed what was in the intersection. Okay, so that the, the intersection is not shaded. So everything is in A, but not in A intersection B. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to our next topic. So now what we want to do is do some examples to where we're actually doing order of operation um, with respect to set theory, and we call that order of set operation. And so if you remember from doing regular arithmetic, most of you have either learned the acronym PEMDAS, which is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, um, a way to remember how to do order of operations, or um, you remember BODMAS. And so either way, uh, that acronym is to help you to be able to remember what operations to do first when you have a bunch of them in some expression. And so just like how we use order of operation here, um, we're going to do the same sort of thing whenever we are doing set operations. And so what we want to do now is use those same sets as we did in our previous example of displaying how we actually interpret um, the actual operations given two sets. We want to use that to actually evaluate some um, set expressions. Okay. So our first set is going to be, well, our first expression is going to be the complement of A union B um, intersected with the complement of E union A. And of course, I've rewritten it this way just in case uh, those of you that don't use the C as the complement, you use uh, the little single apostrophe, then that's how uh, you would write it. Okay. All right, so anyway, let's uh, go back here and look at our sets. So we know that for A union B, if we look at this, so whatever uh, we end up having here for that, and of course, we can construct that again. We have one, two, three, four, five, seven, and eight. And so again, all I'm doing, just like how I did last time, is if an element appears in A or in B, then I put it in the new set, okay? So after that, what I'm doing is I need to take the complement of a union B. So everything that is in the universal set, but not in A union B, I am going to write here. So we know that our universal set is just the natural numbers from 1 to 10. And so the first natural number that we know that we don't have in A union B is 6. We also don't have 9, and we also don't have 10. So that is what the complement of A union B would be. Now, of course, for the complement of E, we know since E is all the even numbers from 1 to 10, then E complement is going to be all the odd numbers from 1 to 10. Okay. And then from there, um, we will do the complement of E unioned with A. And so I'm going to come back up here so we can look at A again. So we just let me scroll that up all the way. So here we want to take this set here and union it with this set there. So both of those, both of those um, sets have one. And so I'll just rewrite it kind of like how I have here. So we have all the um, odd numbers here, one, three, five, seven, nine. And for A, we'll just rewrite it like that. So that way we don't have to look at it again. And so now let's go ahead and put all that together. So both of them have one. Um, we have a two, we have a three, we have a four, we have a five, we have seven, we have eight, and we have nine. So that is what 
that would actually end up being. And so now what we want to do is the intersection of uh, this set here and our set complement A union B. So this set here. And I'll go ahead and I'm going to switch colors uh, so that we can know exactly what we're looking at here. So let me get rid of this and get rid of that and switch colors right quick. All right, so we want to know this set and that set. We want to take the intersection of that. All right, so again, um, we know that we have 6, 9, 10, and we have 1, 3, 5, Sorry, not one, three, five. Looking at the wrong one here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, and nine. And so now we want what's in common with both of them. Uh, we know that both don't have six, but we see that both do have nine and both do not have 10. So all this just ends up being the set with just nine in it. Okay. All right, for our next example, we want to take A intersection B union E. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is come up with the set for B union E. And so we'll go back up here and actually remember what B was. So B just has one, three, four, five, and eight. So we'll come here and just say one, three, four, five, eight. And we know that E is just all the even numbers. And so if we do the union of that, um, we'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, and then 10. Because of course, as long as they show up in one set or the other, we can put them in a new set. Okay, so after that, we need to build the set um, with A intersection. And so, of course, we need to know what A is. So if we come back up here to remember what A is supposed to be, it's 1, 2, 4, 7, 8. So we'll come here and put that right here. So 1, 2, 4, 7, and 8. And then B union E is what we just got through listing here. Then of course, after that, then we're just doing the intersection of these two sets or what they both have in common. So we see they both have in common a one, they both have in common a two, they both have in common a four. They do not have a seven in common, but they do both have an eight in common. And so that is what this set would end up being here. And I'm going to erase this, make this look a little better. Two and then eight, yes. So that is what uh, that particular set operation would be. So let's move on to the next example. So for this next one here, uh, we want to find the union of A intersection B and A intersection E. So if we start off, we know that um, the form A intersection B, um, I'll just write everything again, 4, 7, 8, and B was 1, 3, 4, and I forgot what the other part of that was, 5, 8, yes. And then of course we take what's in common. So they both have one. Um, they don't have two in common, but they do have a four in common. And both of them have eight in common. Okay. Now we do the same thing here. Where E is the set of all even numbers. So uh, we take what's in common here. Um, 
let's see. They both have a two in common. They both have a four in common and they both have an eight in common. And so now when we put these two together, we have set with just one, four and eight along with the set with just two, four and eight. And we do the union of that, then that would just be one, two, four and eight. Okay. And so if you notice this particular set expression gave us the set with one, two, four, and eight. And our answer for our last one, which was A intersection B union E also gave us one, four, eight. And so that brings up a good point here is that if you notice here and here, these are equivalent statements. And so what we're actually trying to show is that intersection can distribute over union, much like multiplication can distribute over addition. And so that's one of the, the points that we want to make here. So moving on down, we see that intersection distributes over union, much like multiplication distributes over addition. And so we know that if we have a set that is in this form on the left, it can be equivalent to the same as this form on the right. Now in real life, uh, one of the ways I've actually used this is in designing um, logic circuits. And so um, the intersection logically means and, um, and they actually have what, what's called and gates um, in electrical engineering. Uh, that they make. And so union logically stands for or, and they also have or gates as well. And so uh, if you notice, we only needed two of those quote unquote gates here, where here we need three. And so if I was designing a circuit uh, and I wanted to do this sort of function here, I would want to do it in this sense on the left because I need fewer electrical devices to make that happen. And so by doing that, what you do is cut down on your on your cost by making sure that whatever function you're trying to uh, achieve, you do it with the least amount of components as possible. And so this is one of the, the applications of why we even learn this kind of stuff. Okay. Of course, there's many more, but that's just one of the ways I've actually used it. All right, so let's move on. All right, so we have some additional uh, set properties. And so the first one here is called uh, the set complementation properties. And so we are told that if U is the universal set and A is a subset of U, then we know that all these things are true. And we see that if we take the universal set and we do the complement of that or everything that's not in the universal set, since there's not anything left, that would be equal to the null set. For B, we see that if we take the complement of the set with no members, we end up with the set with everything. And C says, if we take the complement of a set A and then complement it again, we just end up with A again. And D says, if we take some set A that has some members in it and we union it with the complement of A, then what we end up getting is everything that was in the universal set. And of course, if we do the same thing with the intersection, if we take a set A and then uh, do the intersection with the complement of A, in other words, everything that is in A um, and everything that is outside of A, if we try to see what's in common with it, it should be nothing. And that's why it ends up being the null set. And so here I'm just going to uh, use these examples here to sort of demonstrate that. So we have the universal set and we want to do the complement of the universal set. So if we do the complement of the universal set, if our universal set has um, the numbers one through four in it, natural numbers, then of course there's nothing left, so that ends up being the null set. Of course, if we take our set A and we complement that, According to the universal, 
The only other two numbers that we have is 1 and 2. And then if we complement that again, then of course the only other two numbers that aren't in the universal set for 1 and 2 is 3 and 4. So you see we get the same thing again. So if we take the empty set or the null set, which is a set with no members, and we complement that, we end up getting everything, okay? Which is set 1, 2, 3, 4, which ends up being the universal set. If we take the set A, which is the set with just 3 and 4 in it, and we union that with the set with everything that's not in A, then, of course, as long as an element appears in one of the two sets, we can write it in the new set, and we see that we get everything back again, which is the universal. And then <clears throat> if we do the intersection, doing the same thing here, of course, both of these sets have nothing in common, so that would end up being the null set. All right, so moving on here, we see that we also have the commutative, associative, and distributive properties for union and intersection. And so, of course, um, this is <clears throat> like the same stuff, like um, 2 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 2, and 2 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 2. So, and we're also saying that um, here, of course, with our normal distributive property, this would be the same thing. Uh, a times B plus is, is the same thing as A times B plus A times C. So we're saying that equivalently within the world of set theory. And so A union B is equal to B union A. A intersection B is equal to B intersection A. And A union B union C is the same thing as um, A union B union C. So, of course, for the associative is something like this. This would be the same as if we added 2 plus 3 first and then 4, or if we decided to add 3 plus 4 first and then add 2. Okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. And so the same kind of thing with uh, multiplication here. If we replace all of our addition signs with multiplication, uh, this would be the exact same thing. So for E, we see how we have union and intersection, so the distributive property there. So notice how in F we discovered that intersection can be distributed over union, but we also see here that union can be distributed over intersection. And so that's the main thing that we want to um, illuminate there as well. Okay, so the second set of additional properties for set theory is the De Morgan's Laws. And so the De Morgan's Laws basically tell us how to reinterpret whenever we want to say the complement of a union of two sets as well as the complement of an intersection of two sets. So here for our first one here, which is the complement of the union of two sets, what we're saying here is that if we want to know what is going to be everything outside the union of the two sets A and B, that is the same as saying everything uh, that is in common with what is outside of A as well as what is outside of B. And so when we talk about the complement of the intersection of two sets A and B, then we're saying that whatever is outside of the intersection of those two sets is the same thing as what is the union of whatever is outside of A as well as what is outside of B. So we take everything that's outside of A, everything that's outside of B, and we put that into a, a union set, okay? And so to practice this so we can actually see this in action, um, I have this example where our universal set is just the natural numbers from one to five, our set A, just has one and five in it, and our set B has two, four, and five. And so if we take the complement of the union, then of course, the first thing that we need to find is the union of A and B. 
And so if we take the union of A and B, that would just be 1, 2, 4, and 5. And so if we do the complement of that, then that would be everything outside of this particular set with respect to the universal. So basically everything that's in the universal that's not in here. And so the only thing that we're missing is 3. Now, if we looked at the complement of A and then intersected that with the complement of B, it would look something like this. So everything that is outside of A with respect to the universal set is all the numbers from, uh, well, all the natural numbers from 1 to 5 that aren't 1 and 5. So the complement of A would just be 2, 3, and 4. And then, of course, the complement of B would be everything in the universal set that's not in here. So we got 1, we have 3, and I believe uh, that's it. So uh, let's make that brace look a little better here. And so now, if we do what is in common with both of these, we see that the only element that's in common in both sets is 3. And so thus, that is our first De Morgan's Law, basically saying that here, if we take the complement of the union of two sets, that is the same as the intersection of the complement of both of those sets. Now, let's turn the other way, and let's do the intersection of A and B and then take the complement of that. So for A and B we need to find out what is in common with it and so we see that 5 is the only element that's in common in both sets. And so if we take the complement of that, that is everything with respect to the universal that is outside of this particular uh, set where the intersection. So basically it's just 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so if we look here for our next one, if we take everything that is outside of A, we know that everything that is outside of A is all the natural numbers that aren't uh, 1 and 5 with respect to the universal. So that's 2, 3, 4, again, unioned with everything that is outside of B. So we don't have a 1 and we don't have a 3 here for B, so that is what the complement of B is. And so when we union that together, then that would just be 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so we see that we end up getting the same thing there. So we see with just uh, this example here how we can use De Morgan's laws to rewrite the complement of a union or the intersection of, or the complement of the intersection of two sets. Okay, so the last concept that we want to talk about is trying to figure out the cardinal number for the union of two sets. And so another way of saying it is, is trying to correctly find out how many elements are in the union of two sets. And so the reason why this is important is because if we take some set A and some set B and we try to union them, if A and B have elements that are in common, we may make the mistake of actually counting them um, more than we need to, okay? So in other words, we may count them twice instead of just counting them once. And so we've been intuitively doing that as we go through these uh, previous examples that you've seen, but now we're actually illuminating this uh, specifically, okay? So basically what this says is if we wanna find out the cardinal number or the number of elements in the union of two sets, we take everything that we see in A, everything that we see in B, and then we subtract out what A and B have in common. And of course, that would be known as the, the cardinal number of the intersection of both of those. And of course, this is the alternative notation for it if, if you're um, in a course to where you're actually using this, um, where they're using the absolute value notation for it instead of uh, the notation where you have the N here. So let's look at this example to sort of illuminate this. So we have a set A and a set E, and we want to figure out what is going to be the 
cardinal number for the union of these two sets. Okay, so here we know that if we do this, um, and I'll just erase that here, we need to know what the cardinal number of A is plus the cardinal number of E minus the cardinal number of the intersection of both of these. So, of course, in set A, we have five members. In set E, we also have five members. And then for the set A intersection E, we need to find out what is in common with both sets. And so we see here that um, we have a two that is in common with both sets. We have a four that is in common with both sets. And we have an eight that is in common with both sets. So that tells us that our cardinal number or the number of elements in that set is three. And thus, when we add all that up, we'll add five and five and then subtract three, we get set. And so that's telling us that we actually have uh, seven total members in the union of A and E. And so this concludes the second part of the set theory basics. And I hope this helped out a lot. And um, check out my other videos if necessary. Take care.